praise the Lord. I welcome you to our special meeting again. And I'm trusting God that God is going to bless us even with the teaching of his word this moment. It will be a blessing that we accommodate us in the presence of God. Not just we coming into the presence of God, but we abiding in the presence of God. I want to thank you for taking time to always listening to our programs most especially some of you that always go to our telegram channel to download our messages and thanks to the online platforms god bless you all in jesus name we'll be having a very wonderful discussion this afternoon this moment we are having a wonderful time with the lord because i believe it is the desire of god that we should all return back to God. And we are in a time where a lot of believers are discouraged in their work with God. Many do not know how to return back to God and different things are beginning to happen. Those that began in the spirit are eventually ending up in the flesh. And it is the will of God that we all should return back to the place of the spirit. When I was teaching you on walking in the spirit, I think I explained to some of you, I explained to you here, that to walk in the spirit is not just a mindset. It is also a position, a location in the spirit. And I told you that to walk in the spirit is to live outside the flesh. And to walk in the flesh is to live outside the spirit. And I also explained to you that walking in the spirit is obedience to the scriptural instructions but this day we are going to have a teaching that will be taking us back into the presence of God let us bow right down in prayers and begin to talk to the Lord now ask God to bless you with his word that as the word of God is coming forth it should become a blessing to you a blessing to your soul it should revive you it should refire you and strengthen your commitment with the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Our gracious Father, we thank you because we have come again to eat your word. We know that every time we come like this, you always teach us truth. You always explain to us possible truth in scriptures, backing up with your grace or your enablement to be able to put into practice the things you'll be communicating to us. We thank you, Father, and we appreciate your name. Receive all the praises in Jesus' name. Quickly, let us open our Bibles to the book of Jeremiah chapter 7. Jeremiah chapter 7. I read from verse 1. Jeremiah 7, verse 1. The Bible says from verse 1, the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim there this word and say, Hear ye the word of the Lord, all ye of Judah, that enter in at this gate to worship the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your ways and your doings. And I will cause you to dwell in this place. Amend your ways and your doings. And I will cause you to dwell in this place. Before we read further, you must understand that at this point, God had a controversy with the people of Israel. This was before the Babylonian captivity. And God has sent various prophets and priests and people to, to the people of Israel, calling them to return back to God. But they continued in their iniquity. And here is God sending Jeremiah to them that Jeremiah should go to the door of the house of God. In the house of God or in the temple of the Old Testament, they had priests, they had Levites, but none of these people were able to secure the voice of God. But here is a man who was not part of the priesthood. Jeremiah was not a priest. But at this point, the Lord had to give him a message as a prophet. And say, go to the house of God and they proclaim my word to them. That if they want to dwell in this land 
and if they want to worship in this house, tell them to hear my word. Verse 4. Just hear not in lying words. Here, yeah, these are the messages now. This is the message that God has given to Jeremiah to pass to them. Just hear not in lying words, saying, The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. For if ye truly amend your ways and your doings, if ye truly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, if you oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widows, and shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after other gods to your hearts, then I will cause you to dwell in this place, in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. Behold, ye trust in lying words that cannot profit. Will ye still murder and commit adultery and swell falsely and burn incense unto Baal and walk after other gods whom ye know not and come and stand before me in this house which is called by my name and say we are delivered to do all these abominations here is the controversy that God had with the people of Israel they are, de they, they are departed they have left the pattern and the instructions that God gave to them through Moses. And these are the abominations that the people began to practice. And because of the love of God towards the people of Israel, he kept sending prophets to them. May I send it clear to every one of us here that God will not judge us without first sending messages to us. Anyone that found himself or herself in hell had initially experienced or encountered the warning of the Lord. Now, before they went into captivity, the Lord many times sent prophets to them, sent pastors to them, he sent preachers to them, he sent his servants to them. But these people consistently they were disobedient to God. And here is God telling them that they should amend their ways. Their ways were, they, they had ungodly ways, they were practicing ungodliness. They were living in abominations. And everything that God has instructed them not to do became the thing that they, they took delight in. And here is God speaking to Jeremiah. He said, go and tell these people that if they want to dwell in this place and if they want to dwell in my house, which is called by my name, tell them to amend their ways. What a great love that God has for the people of Israel. In fact, God was patient with them. God was patient with them. He kept sending prophets. But fortunately, the people never heed to the warning. And I think the Lord is using this to call us, as many of us here who have gone far away from the Lord, I think the Lord is speaking to us through the verses of the scriptures that we should amend our ways. We should amend our ways. Now, read verse 11. Is this house which is called by my name become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, even I have seen it, saith the Lord. But go ye now unto, thy, unto my place, which was in Shiloh, where I set my name at the first, and see what I did to it for the wickedness of my people Israel. And now, because you have done all these works, saith the Lord, and I spake unto you, rising up early and speaking, but ye had not, and I called you, but ye answered not. Therefore, I will do unto this ass which is called by my name, wherein ye trust, and unto the place which I gave to you and to, and to your fathers, as I have done to Shiloh. And I will cast you out of my sight, as I have cast out all your brethren, even the old seed of Ephraim. Therefore, pray not for, for these people, neither lift up cry nor prayer for them, neither make intercession for them, for I will not hear them. It is unfortunate that God intentionally had to raise judge, judgment on them. You know the story. Eventually, they were taken into captivity in Babylon. It was a time of sorrow. It was a time of shame. In fact, while they were journeying to Babylon, the, the book of Psalms gave us a revelation of what happened to them. Because after they disobeyed God, God released his judgment and the Babylonians came to carry them 
into Babylon. And here, while they were on their way to Babylon, that was where these Bible passages came from. By the rivers of Babylon, they we sat down and they we wept when we remember Zion. Why the, why the, the enemies, the, the Babylonians were taking them to Babylon? They remembered Zion. They wept while they were at the river of Babylon. Why they sat down there? They wept when they remembered Zion. In fact, the enemy required from them that they should sing the Lord's songs to a strange God and in a strange land. Unfortunately, that was a judgment that God passed to them. I'll be discussing with you on the topic let's return back to God. Let's return back to God. In the Old Testament where we read in Jeremiah chapter 7, we saw that God judged the people by taking them to, the, to Babylon. In the New Testament, there may not be any Babylons, physical Babylon, taking us into captivity. But there will be possibly spiritual Babylons taking believers into spiritual captivity. And many believers already are discouraged and things are beginning to happen in the eyes of God. And at such a time, we hear the fire has gone out. And where many believers do not have the interest to be consistent in serving the Lord again. The Lord is calling us to return back to Him. What is happening in these last days is as according to the prophetic word of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said in the last days, iniquity shall abound and then the love of many shall was cold. If there is any other time that God, Jesus was prophesying about, he was prophesying about the last days and of which the day we are. And many believers already are beginning to lose their commitment and consecration. Many of them are already losing their passion for the Lord. And things are beginning to happen in the eyes of God, even as many believers have departed from the ways of God. In this crucial time and season, where God is showing us mercy to call us back to himself, it is very, it is very needful that we consider our ways again. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 20 to 22, 2 Peter chapter 2, from verse 20 to verse 22. For if after they have escaped the pollution of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the later end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandments delivered unto them. But it is happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit, and the soul that was washed to a wallowing in the mile. Now understand that Peter was speaking about the believers who has departed from the way of Christ. It is one thing to be born again. It is another thing to be a backslider. Of course, we do not believe in eternal security that is unconditional. We believe in conditional security. Jesus said, abide in me and as I abide in thee. That as a branch cannot do without his vine, so ye cannot do without me. That means there's a condition. As long as we keep abiding in, in Christ, we will keep enjoying the benefits in Christ. The moment there is separation, the moment there is departure, there will be what? Elimination. And that is why the Lord is speaking to us that in these last days, we must seek him again. We must, come, we must come back to abide in him. As many of us that have returned back to our vomit, and we are beginning to practice the works of darkness, we are beginning to touch sin, and the things that we once rejected, forbid, and forsaken have become our practice and ways of life. The Lord is not condemning us, but is asking us to return back to him. As we approach the end of the world, it is very important that, number one, we, we consider our ways. As we are coming to the end of the world, and we are approaching the rapture, and we are expecting the sudden return of the Lord, it is very important that we, we consider our ways. We consider your ways. How is your way, or are your ways with the Lord? How do you walk with God? We consider your ways. 
we consider your actions we consider your decisions we consider your feelings your emotions we consider your relationships we consider your life's practices we consider it is very important that even as we come to the end of the world and as we are approaching the end of the age we must reconsider our ways number two we must re-examine our works we must re-examine our works our works with god our works with men are we faithful to god are we honest with men our ways not full of dishonesty dishonesty and even unfaithfulness in our places of work do they know us to be people that are honest do we do we do we do what we say or we only say and never do what we say are we keeping to our promises can men count on our words can men count on us are we obedient to the scripture are we obedient to god's word do others see christ in us in our places of work do others see christ in us are we representing christ well in the places where we find ourselves in our marriages do our wives see christ in us do our husbands see christ in us do our children see christ in us and as a child or as children do your parents see christ in you and you must understand that this whole thing is the reason why god is calling us back to himself that we have to return back to the lord no matter how far we have gone no matter how deep in sin we have gone no matter how far in gross darkness we have departed the lord is asking us to return back to him to return back to him because he is the light of the world and no man that followeth him shall walk in darkness if only we come to him to walk with him he will give us the light of life and that is why god is speaking to us that it is very expedient that we return to the lord number three we have to reshake our hearts number one we consider your ways number two re-examine your works number three we check your hearts what are the things that you are passionate after now what are the things that takes your time from for god away what are the things that interrupt and distract you from having quality time with the lord we check your heart what are your passions jesus was speaking to the jews and he said you cannot serve god and mammoths what is in your heart from the abundance of the earth, the man speak. What is in your heart is what you talk about every day. So we need to reshake our hearts. Are we beginning to love the world and the things that are in the world? Are we beginning to love and enter into friendship with the world? Are we beginning to enjoy the things of the world? Have we departed from the ways of the Lord? What are the things that we meditate, that we think about always? What are the things that we, that we desire every time? Is it not money? Money is not bad, but the love of money is the root of all evil. What are the things that makes your consecration and passion for the Lord to reduce? What have taken away your Jesus? Judah is coward so Jesus for silver, for pieces of silver. He so Jesus. You may point accusing finger to, to Judah is coward and say, Judah is coward. How could you sell your, your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? That is a simple thing to do. But today you may not sell Jesus for pieces of silver, but you have replaced him with your love for money. The time that is allocated to Christ, you have converted him to a time to search for money. And the Lord is asking us to return back to that place where we first met him, to return back to our consecration and consistency. We are living actually in a critical time. And in this time we are living in, we are living in a very dangerous time. We are living in a very dark age. In fact, the world is getting more darker. Things are getting more deeper and wickedness is increasing. And in this wicked age we are living in, we are living in a critical time. Number one, we are seeing is increasing. We are seeing is increasing. There are many pattern, methods that are rising. Different pattern and method that are rising. Instrument of sin that promotes sin, that advances sin, that encourages sin. Sin is increasing. Backsliding is advancing. As sin is increasing in the world, backsliding is advancing in the church. Those who were shoshi are now becoming worldly. And the world is becoming shoshi. So there's intermarriage between the world and the church. And that is why God is asking us to return back to him. The fellowship is becoming more corrupt. 
and people are becoming more defied and the wickedness of the world that are abomin abomination to the Lord Almighty have been transferred into the practices of the church. So the Lord is asking us that we should return back to him as sin is increasing and backsliding is advancing and believers are discouraging. Believers are discouraging. Discourage themselves. They are discouraged in serving the Lord. They are discouraged in consistency in serving the Lord. They are discouraged to, to, be, you know, to be sacrificial to the Lord. In this age, where prayer is season. Prayer is, is season. Paul the apostle said, pray without season. But now prayer is season. People don't pray again. Many are discouraged to pray. The fire they carried only lasts for two days. After two days, they return back to the flesh. So, prayer is season. Evangelism is forgotten. Evangelism is forgotten. It is not a central practice in the church again. It is not a central message in the church again. In the fellowship again. They do not talk about evangelism. We do not preach about evangelism. All we are hearing about are the things that accommodate us in our comfort zone. And now we have forgotten about evangelism, the great commission that God has given to the church. And then holiness is neglected. Holiness is neglected. People do not want to practice holiness again. Holiness in the secret, holiness in the public, holiness in adornment, holiness in lifestyle, holiness in relationships, and holiness in your works. Holiness is neglected. It is not an emphasis again. It is not a focus. It is not a desire. It is not a passion. It is not a watchword. It is not a goal. It is not something we desire again. Holiness has been neglected. And love is departing. Love is departing. We are now, you know, full of hatred, full of bitterness, full of anger, selfishness. Love is departing. And then faith is decreasing. Faith is decreasing. Faith is decreasing. Many faith has been weakened. Many faiths have been discouraged. They are not having faith on themselves. Having faith in the world. Having faith on, 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 their, on their talents. No one has faith in God again. They say, we have been waiting upon God. What did God do for us? They say, they have been trusting God. Did God show up? We are not going to trust the Lord again. We are going to trust our talents. And most of the teachings that comes up nowadays talks about trusting yourself. Trusting yourself. Trusting yourself. Trusting yourself. As much as that teaching appears to be good, it is not departing our focus from the Lord to ourselves. So you discover that faith is decreasing. And at such a time, such a dark time, such a wicked time, quiet time with the Lord has been forgotten. Quiet time with the Lord has been forgotten. There's no quiet time again. Let me ask you, how many of you had quiet time this morning? I mean quiet time, real quiet time with the Lord. It has been forgotten. When we wake up in the morning, the first thing we do is to pick up our phone and access the internet. Quiet time has been forgotten. There is no appointed time with the Lord again. You do not have appointment with the Lord daily again. So quiet time has been forgotten. And this is why God is asking us to return back to him. To return back to him. Quiet time has been forgotten. There is no quiet time again. There is no practice of quiet time again. No desire for quiet time again. We have forgotten about our waiting upon the Lord. We have forgotten about seeking the Lord in the morning before going out. All those things are forgotten. Reading through the scripture annually is now like unattainable. Unattainable. Have you forgotten those days we read through the scripture from Genesis to Revelation? But now, even to finish a, a book of the scripture, just a book is very difficult. You start Genesis chapter 1. You come to Genesis chapter 40. Uh, after about, uh, about five months, you can even reach from chapter 1 to chapter 2. I've taken many months because there is no interest to, to wait upon the Lord through the reading of the scripture. So we do not have interest to finish the scripture annually. We have come up with an ideology that it is not about finishing the scripture. It is about knowing the scripture. That is okay. I understand what you are saying. But it is still the same thing. If we are trying to know the scripture, many times we'll be finishing the scripture. Because the Bible says that this book of the Lord shall not depart out from their mouth. But thou shalt meditate there in day and night. If we are reading the scripture and meditating on it night and day, I'm telling you, we'll be finishing the scripture. 
So most time we try to uh, uh, we try to. Uh, it's not a sin. I know you may say, but it's not a sin. Yes, it's not a sin, but it shows in your spiritual life. It weakens your consecration. When you are reading the Bible once a week, how will you be able to be healthy spiritually? We have to read the Bible daily, meditate on the Scripture daily. Let us return back to our commitment to the Scripture, commitment to the Bible. In those days, it was no Bible, no breakfast, no Scripture, no supper. But now all these things have been wiped away, fold away, thrown away, and there is no interest again. But some of you might say, but Apostle Peter saying, does it mean, what does it mean? It means that we have to return back to the Lord. Don't for, forget about it, because some of you might be saying that, does it mean that uh, we, we must be reading the Bible every day? Of course, you have to read the Bible every day. So backsliding has gradually crept into our life, and that is why the Lord is asking us to return back to him. Reading to the scripture is like unattainable again. And then we see that sin is secretly practiced. Sin is not secretly practiced. And that is why it's affecting the fellowship, affecting the churches. Pastors are living in sin. Workers are living in sin. Members are living in sin. And the devil finds a suitable ground to afflict the church and the people of God. Because even the head is rotting. The body is rotting. And where will the healing comes from? But the Lord is asking us that if we can return back to him, the balm of Gilead, if we can return back to him, the great physician, he will make us whole again. And I pray that we return back to him today in Jesus' name. In this age of gross backsliding, gross backsliding, the Lord is requesting us to remember where we are falling. In this age of gross backsliding, where many are backsliding, the Lord is reminding us, the Lord is asking us the Lord is wanting us to remember where we are falling. Remember where thou art falling and repent. Remember where thou art falling and repent. And that is what the Lord is asking us. Remember where thou art falling and repent. Where have you fallen? How did it happen? What happened? How, how come it happened? Examine your lives again. What did you become, you, what did you become closer to? What relationship did you keep? Who came into your life and who walked out of your life? What Christian meeting did you did you leave? What fellowship did you leave? What commitment did you leave? Are you a worker and you have left the workforce? You are not no no nobody to examine you again. You have left the fellowship, you have left the church, or you are planning to leave. Remember where that falling. How did it happen? Who did you drive out of your life? Who came into your life? And the moment the lady came into your life, you began, you began to sin. The moment the man came into your life, you began to sin with him. Remember. Then number two, you repent. Repentance, as I was teaching some of you in discipleship class, I say repentance is the turning away from sin. Not just that. It is confession and the forsaking of sin. The confessing and the forsaking of sin. You repent, confess your sin and forsake them. Then number three, you return back to the Lord. Return back to your commitment. Return back to your consecration. Return back to the things you were once doing for the Lord. God wants us to come back to Him. God wants us to draw nearer to Him. James chapter 4, verse 8 to 9. Draw near to me, and I will draw near to you. Cleanse your ancient sinners. Purify your heart, yet double minded. Be afflicted and mourn. Let your joy be turned to morning and your laughter to let your your joy your, your your joy be turned to morning and your laughter to weeping humble yourself in the sight of the sight of the lord and he will lift you up draw near to me and i will draw near to you see it the scripture we must desire to draw near to him we must cry back to him this is not how we started we didn't start like this what happened where are those days where are those fire that people once saw in us how it what happened what happened we were not like this before who contaminated you? Who corrupted you? Where is that zeal? Where is that passion? Where is that body? Where is that peace? Where is that joy? We have lost all these things. We have lost all these things. Let's return back to our appointed time with God. Let's return back to our appointed time with God. Let's return back to our consecration. Our consecration to the Lord. We told the Lord we will never set our eyes on anything that defies the earth. All those pornographic materials on, in our phone, we delete them. We set our eyes on the Lord. 
Our commitment of not setting defilement before our faces. Let's return back to that. Our consecration. Our commitment to evangelism. Once or twice in a week. Every week you go out to evangelism. Once or twice. Our commitment and consecration to our duty post. In the house of God, you are sweeping clean in the house of God. In the choir department, let's return back to those things. Let's return back to those things. Let's return back to holiness. Let's return back to holiness. Our wash word, let's return back to holiness. The Lord is asking us to return back to him. Not tomorrow. The Lord is asking us to return back to him today. Now. The Lord wants us to return back to him now. Now. And it's, it is my desire to lead you back to God. That we all, with, with broken hearts and contrite spirit, with broken spirit and contrite hearts, we all approach the Lord for forgiveness. Approach the Lord for mercy. Are you ready to go, to back, to go back to the Lord? Are you ready to return back to Him? Why not bow your head and pray as wherever you are sitting down, just bow your head and there and say, Lord, I'm coming back to you. Lord, I'm coming back to you. You have spoken to me. You have sent your word to me. Yes, I've heard your word. I've received your calling. You are coming back to me. Come on to me. All ye that labor and a heavy laden, I will give you rest. Come, let us reason together. Though your sins may be red as crimson, though your sins may be as scarlet, God is saying that he's going to make it white as snow. He's going to make it white as wool if we can come. If we can come to reason with him, no matter how far we have gone, no matter how far we have departed from the ways of the Lord, Jesus is calling us back. Do not deny, do not reject, do not turn away from this calling. Jesus is calling you. Jesus is calling you. 